Today, the psalmist is crying out. It's lamenting how the walls of the vineyard have been breached and how the boar of the forest has laid waste to the vineyard. And if we look at the psalm, we see how the vineyard represents Israel. However, with the New Testament, um, coming from the New Testament, right, fulfillment, we know that the house of Israel was a prefigurement of the church, where through Israel, God was going to gather the whole nations together as a new people. And so as you read this psalm, you can very easily read it and interpret it as referring to the church, to the family, and to our hearts. So the family is also considered a domestic church. And if you look at the boar of the forest, it represents anything, anything that wishes to lay waste to the vineyard of the church, our family, and our hearts. Now, one of those boars of the forest, right, that I think is very prevalent and important to talk about, that wishes to lay waste to the vineyard, is that of pornography. And this danger presents itself at such an early age. In a recent study, it was revealed that 15% of teen respondents said that they first saw online pornography at, 10, at the age of 10 or younger, even going to the age of 8 years old. The average age reported for first exposure is 12 years old. And typically, people who have developed an addiction to pornography and were exposed at 12 or younger often need professional help in order to be set free. So what do we do? What do we do? The common response is to set up internet filters. And so the first question we can ask ourselves is, do we have those filters in place? Do we have those uh, common basic preventative measures that could make our homes a safe haven, protected from the hypersexualized uh, culture around us? And even if we have those internet filters, those necessary filters in place, it's not going to be enough on its own. Something else is needed. And what is needed are parents filled with the love of God, with the love of God, who are intentional in forming their children uh, in foundational truths that come from God. If we go back to the psalm today, we uh, see the images of hedges around the vineyard, and the gospel, I mean, and the psalm walls around the vineyard. These are scriptural images of protection. And so we need to set up protective walls, strong walls of protection around our families. And so what is a strong, what makes a strong wall? Well, something that's, that endures, something preferably that's not easily broken. Well, when we look at the scriptures in our faith, we know that God's truths are something that's indestructible. The truths that God gives us are lasting and endures forever because God endures forever. Amen? Amen. And so we're going to look today at two walls that we could set up. Walls of protection and prevention around our families. And now these two points, I'm going to be drawing from a resource that will be handing out, uh, that will be handing out here at the parish, available to all families. And so I'll mention that more of that at the end. And so these two points that I'm drawing from, they're the following. The first is going to be the wall, the truth of who we are in Christ. We need to center our family and kids and ground them in the truth of their identity in Christ, namely that they are fearfully and wonderfully made. Why do we need to do this? Because as many of us know, social media, the media, the internet, pornography, they present to us certain standards of beauty and they're false standards. We are bombarded with false standards of beauty and if we don't hear anything to the contrary, we can be blinded to and even unaware of our inherent value and worth given to us by God. And as we see the statistics with the rise of mental health in teenagers and our youth, all the more reason why we need to be proactive in rejecting these lies and confirming them in the truth of who they are in Christ. And so what does it mean 
to be fearfully and wonderfully made. Well, it means this. It means God didn't make you by accident. I mean, God didn't put you together haphazardly or begrudgingly made you. He purposely loved you into existence. It was a, his creating you was a sacred and holy process. I don't know if uh, any of those who are artists here, but imagine even those who are not artists like to use the analogy that if you were to just draw a stick figure, right, you wouldn't really care if something were to happen to it or if it broke or someone ruined it. But if you were an artist and you put all this time and effort into making this work of art, that was your best work of art that you've ever done, you'd probably value that a bit more, be a bit more protective around it. Maybe even if you are an artist, all the more reason. Well, God, right, the divine artist, he created us with such love and a holy and sacred process that he made us in his image and likeness. Now, here's a question. What is the value of God? The answer, it's immeasurable. God is goodness itself, beauty itself, love itself. So that, what does it mean about us then if we are made in the image and likeness of God? It means then that we, right, have infinite value and worth. A worth that's shown by what God decided to do for us on the cross. He only needed to shed one drop of his blood to save us. And yet to show us how much we mean to him, he gave everything. And so we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We are someone to behold. And so that's going to be the first wall. In fact, actually, before I go on to the second one, I want everyone to put your hands on, over your heart right now. I just invite you to put your hands over your heart and repeat after me. I declare that I am a child of God and that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And I believe that I am someone to behold, that I am loved, and I was made with care and attention. Amen. First truth, ground ourselves in that truth. The second wall of protection is going to be the truth of human sexuality, what it's about and what its purpose is. Now, I just like to use the analogy of a fireplace uh, to kind of talk about the importance of knowing the proper context and nature. If you look at a fire in a fireplace, it's a good thing, right? Uh, you like to gather around it, creates an ambiance, right? It gives warmth. That fire is good. But all of us can see how if the fire, for some reason, happened to jump out of the fireplace and it lands on the carpet, that uh, there's a danger there, right? Maybe we put it out and there, the, the carpet is singed, a little burned. But if it's, that fire is uncontrolled and it leaps completely out, there's a danger of the house burning down. So when we look at our sexuality, human sexuality, it is one, it is good. It is a gift given to us by God. And so, and as a gift, he gives us, right, its proper nature and purpose so that we can enjoy the fullness of that gift, right? Whereas if that fire comes out of the fireplace, if we begin to not know what the truth of uh, human sexual, sexuality is, we listen to the lies of pornography, of social media, we begin to uh, go about it in a different way, we're going to set ourselves up possibly to encounter a lot of woundedness, to experience trauma. We'll find uh, destructiveness in our relationships and our families. And so all the more important than to ground ourselves in this truth. So what is the truth? Well, there's a lot you can say about it, but I'll begin with these two. One, that our human sexuality, it's for the good of the spouses and for the raising up of family. So for the good of the spouses, uh, the marital embrace, right, fosters a deeper unity among, uh, among the spouses. 
right? It increases the intimacy and love and binds them strong, more strongly together uh, in their marital commitment, right? And in fact, it increases gratitude for their spouse. And if you look at scientifically, right, that in, in a marital embrace, right, our brains re- release neurochemicals. And what they do is it binds us to the source of that joy and pleasure, which is our spouse. And so, again, our sexuality is meant for connection. It's meant to bind us and unify us more closely with the one we've committed ourselves for life. It's also for the good of raising family. Right? Again, we get, have the opportunity to be co-creators with God, to populate uh, heaven right, with his children, right? to bring them in and be able to reveal to them the plan God has for them, which is their good in heaven. Right? And also children, the church always talks about that family is the bedrock of society. And children, of course, are good in and of themselves. Now we know that, again, our whole culture conveys the opposite truth. And if we're not careful, we can believe the following, right? We can believe that people can be used and disposed of. It makes us, we can prefer the cheap thrill of fantasy to the goodness of family. And also biologically, our brains can become desensitized in such a way that we are less capable of enjoying and being satisfied with the everyday joys and pleasures around us. And so, all the more reason why to establish this wall, this second wall of truth. Now, there's so much more that can be said about both of these points, even more walls that we can place, which is why at the parish here we're providing resources, again, where I've been drawing these points from, at every uh, entrance of the church. And it's called Equipped, Smart Catholic Parenting in a Sexualized Culture. So, again, you could find the entrance to the church. There is a limited quantity, uh, so I ask that you just limit yourself to one per family. Now, though difficult, right, to engage in this, in this challenge, it's not impossible. We have a God, right, whom the psalmist cries out, crying out to him, asking him to restore the vineyard. God is a God of restoration and resurrection. Our vineyards, our hearts are good. He can restore it. And then we partner with him according to his plan of human sexuality. We together can fight against, right, what the culture is putting against us and put in the necessary steps needed to create a safe haven in our homes.